Hi, I'm Paul from Ecotricity and I'm standing in this glorious mud with my colleague Steve, who's our Director of Generation. We're in Dolby at the second of the new hybrid energy parks that have recently opened thanks to the awesome support of Ecotricity customers. Tell us about the status of this project right now. So it's taken about 10 months to build this and the last couple of days we've just done the final testing and that was all successful so now we've ramped it back up to 100% and it's all good to go. Fantastic, okay. So what we're going to do today is follow the path of the energy, working out how it comes from the sun and the wind up there through these panels and these turbines into your living room. Great, well let's start with the solar panels then, Steve. They're a thing of beauty, aren't they? And how many of them are there on this site? So there's 16,000 panels on, wow. on this site here. 16,000, wow. It's enough power to generate, enough power for, for 3,000 homes for a year. So we've got the sun up there, just coming out from behind the cloud. How does that energy get into people's homes via one of these? So a solar panel is made up of a couple of layers, and inside those layers are a, a negatively charged a layer and a positively charged layer. And the, and the solar panel works by absorbing photons from the sun. Now photons are light particles, so you don't need heat, you need light. So when the photon hits the face of the solar panel, it discharges the electrons that are inside the solar panel, and those electrons join together and it makes a current. So all of these join together, you get more and more power, and that generates a direct current, DC, and then goes into one of these pieces of kit to here, which is an inverter. Okay. So when it's a direct current, it then changes this to alternating current. An alternating current, AC, is what comes out of people's houses in your plugs. All your kits in your house runs from alternating current. It goes from the inverter into a transformer and it takes the voltage up to 33,000 volts and that's the same size as what we've got on the network over there. Great, okay, and I believe these are double-sided panels, is that right? That's right, so a little bit of a bonus, bit of electricity that comes from the backside of it as well, from the reflected light from the ground that goes back up those photons and then generates power from the back as well. So after these boxes, cables are going into the ground, right? Um, yep. Where do they go next? So they go into that, transformers just there. Okay. And then they go underneath the ground all the way up to the top of the site there. Okay, let's follow them, shall we? Okay, so now we have the, the wind turbines behind us. And again, tell us how the wind actually turns into electricity, Steve. What's going on up there? So that turning motion is how uh, electricity is generated in traditional power stations, whether it's a nuclear or gas or old coal ones as well. So you want that turning motion. And the wind is what turns the blades. That's the fuel, that's free. Yeah. There's a generator at the top there, generates the power in, in the same way as, as, as any traditional power station. So these turbines here, we've got nine turbines, and these will provide enough power for around right about just under 5,000 homes for a year. Okay. So in addition to the solar park just there, that's, that's a decent amount of, of electricity generation in quite a small area as well. How do they know which way the wind blows? So on the top of each of the machines, there's an anemometer. Now it's not the old school type ones, which is those three cups which spin, which gives the wind speed, and there's a tail on the back of it, tells you which direction the wind is going. There's a more intelligent system on there. So there's two sensors on the top, and it shines a beam of light, and that beam of light measures particles of dust to see how fast the dust is going, that gives a wind speed, and also which direction that dust is going, and that gives a direction of where the wind is coming from. Okay. So the machines themselves will turn into the wind depending on where the wind direction is. So you might hear occasionally your motor is giving a little bit of a whine, you have to be pretty close to them, it's just as it's turning and facing in, into the wind as well. So there's no motors up there to turn the blades, it's all done by the wind. Wow, really quite intelligent machines then. The solar and the wind are right next to each other. Are there some benefits of them being in that close proximity? There is, definitely. So this wind park of ours has been here for a few years and we always knew we were going to build a solar park, so we allowed for it in our design of the substation where we wanted to join back up to the network there. So we call these a hybrid park, two forms of generation into one point of connection up to the grid there. So these turbines here generate enough power for around about 5,000 homes. So with the solar and the wind together, that's enough power for just under 8,000 homes. Well, we're slap bang in the middle of the site now, and I was just struck that we've got this working barn right behind us here. So life goes on as normal for the farmer, right, Steve? Yes, yeah, so the farming activities carry on. So inside the wind park here, 
the, the, the farmer carries on doing his, doing his farming, doing his, growing his crops in the same way. From a space point of view, it's quite a minimal impact. So the access tracks that we are standing on here, this route was already here, the farmer used that before we came along with our, with our wind park. This is a bit upgraded because we've got some pretty heavy stuff that we're bringing here and our service vans use this as well as the farmer using it for as well. So from a space point of view, it's a win-win for us all. So this substation here, which was built when we built the wind farm, now this has been here for a while, but we always knew we were going to add the solar park to it. So it's been sized appropriately to add that additional equipment that the solar park is needed. So the two cables coming from the wind park and from the solar park come into this building here. So this is at 33,000 volts, goes onto the, onto the network just here, and then goes into substations which are in the local area, drops the voltage back down again, and then goes from there under the roads into people's houses from there. Steve, thank you so much for the tour today. I've learned a lot. It's been really educational to follow that energy all the way from the sun and the wind through this site and into our customers' living rooms. And thank you once again to Ecotricity customers because none of this would happen without you. Thank you for being with us and helping us build more and more of these wonderful green generation assets.